It is October 2030. The world is glued to screens worldwide. Something is happening that most people alive on Earth have not ever witnessed life before. A human is about to step his foot onto the surface of the moon. The first human to do so since December 1972, when the last men walked on the moon during the Apollo 17 mission. People stare in disbelief at the 4K livestream on various platforms, on YouTube, TV, everywhere. The man in a spacesuit steps onto the moon and says something. And then proceeds to erect a flag. But the flag is red. China has landed on the moon before the US in this new Space Race 2.0. The West is shocked. How could this have happened? This, dear friends of spaceflight, is a scenario that really might happen if NASA continues the way it does now. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite into orbit. The US was completely taken by surprise and shocked. This event would later come to be known as the Sputnik shock. Later, the Soviets launched the first human into space on April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin. And again, the Soviets achieved a major first regarding spaceflight. These were all shocks for the United States of America, but these shocks had an immediate positive effect. Namely, that NASA was founded in order to coordinate the US space program and that US Congress would approve a high budget for NASA so that the US space program would get the necessary funds which would allow the US to get back on top. And indeed, as we know in hindsight, this worked very well. While in the late 50s and early to mid 60s, it was always the Soviets who achieved all the firsts in spaceflight matters. The first artificial satellite in space, the first animal in space, the first man in space, the first woman in space, the first spacewalk. But from the mid 60s onwards, the tides, however, would turn and then the US found itself on top. This, of course, culminated in the first landing of humans on the surface of the moon with Apollo 11. But as steep and sudden as the rise of the USA to become the dominant space power was, as steep was the fall. See, the problem here was that all this stuff was politically motivated. It was a childish competition between two rivaling superpowers who wanted to demonstrate the superiority of their respective political system. The USA got lucky because the Soviet's chief rocket engineer Sergei Korolev died in 1966 and from that point onwards things went downhill for them. But as soon as the Soviets weren't a worthy rival anymore and not even able to reach the moon at all with their own cosmonauts, US Congress did not see the necessity anymore to continue funding NASA at those high levels. And so NASA's budget started declining already from 1968 onwards. All plans for moon bases were cancelled and Apollo 18, 19 and 20, which would have seen continued exploration of the moon into 1973 and even into 1974, were cancelled as well. And so as steep as the rise of NASA and of the US was, as steep was the fall. Because since then, believe it or not, nobody has ever been back to the moon. Everything that followed afterwards did not even come close to the impressive glory of the Apollo missions. Maybe except for Skylab, which was noteworthy in that it was an impressively large space station. But the space shuttle era and even the International Space Station delivered very little of real value and did not lead the US anywhere regarding space exploration. In fact, the US space program declined so much that after the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011, 
they couldn't even reach space on their own anymore, but had to book flights for a while aboard Russian rockets. Luckily, things look better now, thanks to SpaceX. However, now the US finds itself wishing that they had continued the Apollo missions back in the day, realizing that it would have been pretty damn smart to continue building moon bases back in the 1970s. Because now, more than half a century after the last moon landings, the US finds itself faced with a new rival. And this rival is very serious about landing Taikonauts on the moon, which is their version of astronauts. And so the scenario that I mentioned before in the intro, that a Chinese flag will be the first flag to be put onto the moon by around 2030 in this new space race, and not an American one, is not even so unrealistic. In this video here I talked about how the Chinese are planning to land their Taikonauts on the moon. And in essence, we could call the Chinese moon landing plan a modified version of Apollo. It is simple and it is relatively easily achievable with standard hardware. Whereas the current NASA plan to return humans to the moon is extremely complex and expensive. Only one single human moon landing as part of the Artemis program will require the launch of an SLS rocket with the Orion capsule, then the launch of a SpaceX moon lander starship, often called HLS, for human landing system, then the launch of a tanker starship, and then the launch of at least six additional starships to refuel the tanker, which will then refuel the SpaceX moon lander starship. The sheer scale and complexity of the mission has led it to be delayed already from 2025 to 2026. And I'm 99.9% .9 confident that even 2026 is insanely optimistic. And in fact, I see a realistic chance that the Chinese will land on the moon before the US in this new space race 2.0. But what then? What would happen if we would now have a red moon? Something which has not happened in the late 60s, but this time very well might. Will this be akin to a new Sputnik shock? Will this cause US Congress to drastically increase NASA's budget so that NASA will have the necessary funds in order to greatly hasten the moon return efforts? I think that the simple answer is yes. It is quite likely that a Chinese moon landing before NASA will have the effect of an immediate budget increase for NASA by US Congress. By how much, we can only guess but it will certainly be quite a few billion dollars more per year. Currently, NASA's annual budget sits at somewhere around $25 billion per year. Now, if that sounds a lot, just compare it for a moment to the US annual defense budget of $900 billion per year. Suddenly, NASA's budget doesn't seem like so much anymore. I personally could see US Congress maybe doubling NASA's budget in the wake of such a crisis. And with that additional money, NASA could pursue a double moon landing approach. On the one hand with the SpaceX human landing system, and on the other hand with a competing system, namely the Blue Origin moon lander. Blue Origin's moon landing approach is much more classical and less complex than the Starship approach. Blue Origin's lander would not require tanker refuelings in orbit and would very likely be achievable in an easier manner. And since its engines run on liquid oxygen and hydrogen, fuel for the return trips could even be created on the moon itself. However, of course, we shouldn't forget the incredible potential that the SpaceX Starship has. It offers an insanely high interior volume and a very high payload capacity and therefore would of course be a complete game changer for moon landings. And with a budget increase by US Congress, NASA would be in the position to greatly accelerate both approaches and this might then actually lead the US to then regain the upper hand again on the moon 
Since then, very likely, lunar starships would land on the moon, alternating with blue origin moon landers at a much higher frequency. Maybe NASA would even get smart and use the leftover SpaceX human landing systems as moon bases in and of themselves, by laying them onto the side and covering them with lunar regolith. Whatever path NASA will choose, the Chinese landing on the moon first in this new space race will really awaken the sleeping giant which is the USA and NASA. And in my opinion, we will then really see the moon race heating up. The Chinese response to that of course will be interesting as well and I can really see an incredible space race taking place in the 2030s where both China and the US will build bases on the moon. And as long as the pressure from China would continue, NASA's budget would very likely remain high. So who knows, maybe it would actually even be beneficial for the US moon landing program if China would land on the moon first in this new space race 2.0. Maybe the US needs a second Sputnik shock so that good old Uncle Sam gets his act together. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please like and subscribe, since we'll continue putting out lots of videos on fascinating topics regarding human spaceflight. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership, because that would allow us to make more and even better videos. Thank you so much in advance. And thank you so much for watching wherever you are, have a great day and see you next time.